Hello, this is Jonathan from The Body of Evidence. Um, I want to talk about John Grisham's tumor. No, as far as I know, John Grisham does not have a tumor, although he did produce one recently and release one to the public. Uh, John Grisham is, of course, a celebrated uh, author of many uh, legal thrillers like The Client, The Pelican Brief. He has recently released a new book against the advice of his agent, his editor, and his publisher. Uh, the book is available for free. Uh, you can order it uh, on, you can order a hard copy of it. They will ship it to you for free either if you're living in Canada or the US. Uh, you can also read it for free as a PDF uh, and, and there are a variety of e-reader formats available. And the book is called The Tumor, a non-legal thriller by John Grisham. Uh, I can confirm that it is very much non-legal. It's also a non-thriller. It's not a novel exactly. I'm not quite sure what he was going for. Um, it is, it reads like average long-form journalism, kind of like a very thick hospital pamphlet. Um, not particularly thrilling. But the, the reason why this caught my attention is that a lot of celebrities fall for pseudoscience because they're not scientists, they're not medical doctors and they fall for this quackery and they end up promoting it to a large portion of the population for some bizarre reason decides to listen to these uh, artists who do not have a background in science. And so I thought maybe this is yet another case of a celebrity falling for pseudoscience. But I kept an open mind and I decided to read the book. Uh, the reason why John Grisham wrote the book, by the way, is that uh, one of his friends and neighbors works for a foundation uh, whose goal is to promote and to fund research into this new technology called focused ultrasound. And so John Grisham uh, was um, asked to do fundraising for, uh, for this foundation. He says, that's not really my thing. What I do is I write books. So he wrote a book about a new medical technology. And so this could have gone wrong in so many ways. And, and, and in a particular way, it kind of did, because like I said, the, the, the book, from a literary point of view, is completely uninteresting. Uh, the character, if I can call him that, is a 35-year-old banker with a wife and three kids. He's diagnosed with glioblastoma, which is a form of brain cancer. Uh, you never get to know these characters. Everything is written in a very matter-of-factly. It's very functional writing. Uh, there are also pictures in the book um, of this family that is pretending to be these characters and it all looks very amateurish and very sort of uh, freshman year in college um, but anyway putting that aside putting aside the, the pedestrian level of writing uh, that this book displays um, I decided to do some research into focused ultrasound to see if he was peddling some quackery or if this was actually real and to my surprise, uh, it turns out that focused ultrasound has been the subject of quite a bit of research in the, in the past decade and actually looks to be a, a genuine, um, I hesitate to use the term game changer, but uh, a great new treatment for cancer and for other types of diseases. The way that it works is by focusing beams of ultrasound uh, on the tumor, for, for example. So it is a completely uh, non-invasive technology. Uh, a doctor would use medical imaging to see where the tumor is and focus the beam to uh, heat up the cells of the tumor, almost killing them instantly uh, by rising the temperature to well above 80 degrees Celsius in a matter of a second. Um, so uh, this technology has been uh, looked at quite a bit. A lot of trials have been done. Its first clinical application was in uh, prostate cancer, but it's also been looked at for breast cancer, for pancreatic cancer, for bone cancers. And so far, the data is looking pretty good. Uh, there have been a lot of low-quality trials, unfortunately, so it's always difficult to extract good information from low-quality trials. You know, it's the old garbage in, garbage out. But it does look quite promising. Um, the only thing is at the end of his book, John Grisham says, well, the technology is only five to ten years away. And that's a bit of an inside joke in skeptical circles because every new technology is always said to be five to ten years away. And that promise rarely materialized as such. So who knows when exactly a focused ultrasound will become routine part of, of, of treatment, of care for, for cancer patients. The other thing is that he mentions that uh, we need to act now and we need to support this type of research because uh, any kind of delay that we encounter uh, means um, uh, that, that more people are dying for no good reason. 
And it is true that I'm sure there are bureaucratic obstacles to this, but at the same time, we do have to do our homework and we have to make sure that the, um, that the, the science is there, that the technology is developed uh, well enough that it is working uh, as good as current treatments, if not better, that we know what the side effects are, uh, that we know also in the long term, uh, what about recurrences and can we treat those, yes or no. So, uh, but, but at the very least, John Grisham is very honest and in his, uh, in his story, he shows uh, what the, the man goes through uh, right now in 2016, but also what would happen 10 years from now if focused ultrasounds were being used to treat him. And at least he does not depict focused ultrasounds as this sort of miraculous cure. Uh, what happens is that, uh, yes, they get most of the, of the glioblastoma, but then the character has to come back um, a few years later when there is a recurrence, and they have to treat that recurrence again. And so uh, the technology is being sold by John Grisham as, uh, as transforming cancer into a chronic condition. So if you keep having these treatments whenever there is a recurrence in your cancer, and so your, your lifespan is extended, perhaps eventually uh, turning cancer to like HIV, such that it is a chronic condition, but your life expectancy is essentially the same as somebody who doesn't have it. So there you have it. Um, a celebrity who is supporting a, a credible uh, scientific uh, technological development, as opposed to a celebrity who is uh, uh, just basically spewing nonsense. So it is refreshing. Uh, the book is not particularly well written. But hey, if you want to read it, it is available for free. You can even order your own hardcover copy. So uh, once again, being a skeptic is good um, and we keep open minds. You know, a lot of people accuse us of, of being closed-minded. I actually read the thing and uh, did my research. And so there you go.